Good morning. Let us begin our prayer. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. I invite you now to kneel if you wish. If not, just please be seated. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most of the God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God's word and deed, by what we have done, by what we have done in front of us. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your peace. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Please stand if you wish. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 95 uh, by half verse responsibly. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Mark. They put me to the test. Forty years long, I detested that generation and said, So I swore in my wrath. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the village, excuse me, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask of me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a well spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, 
The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? The woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the village, excuse me, they left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here that saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, aside from being somewhat lengthy, there's an awful lot in this gospel, particularly an awful lot that we may not pick up on because of cultural differences and all those other things, and it's very important. This woman that is in this gospel and the dynamic between her and Jesus is very interesting because it is different than what one would expect, and that's why the disciples kind of wonder what's going on. It's different than the way the culture was at the time. By any society's measure, by any religious measure, this woman was a three-time loser. She is not given a name. She's a woman. And she's a Samaritan. And that's how society would judge that interaction. It's not how Jesus deals with this person. Not at all. And it's funny, and it's interesting, well, not humorous funny, but it's, it's, it's strange that even today when you read commentaries on this gospel, a gospel you know, written in this happened a couple thousand years ago, people try to make this woman something she is not. They try to claim that this woman, well, she has to be immoral, that whole thing with the five husbands, and then the one now who's not her husband. And that's not what that means. There is the, the, the Leverite law where if a woman, her husband dies, she becomes the husband of the next uh, in line of the, um, of the family. And also, more likely than not, this woman probably suffered from the situation where women were divorced. And in those days, it was basically just a very simple statement. And when a woman was divorced or a woman was widowed, 
they did not inherit anything. They did not keep anything. They were very much on their own. So this woman is not immoral. This woman is certainly a person who has known difficulty in her life. In addition to that, these, these, uh, a lot of scripture scholars are bringing up the fact that this woman's at the well at noon. And women went to the well in the morning because it was cooler and it was easier to do. But the fact is, is what they miss is this gospel. Remember last week when we talked about Nicodemus? And Nicodemus comes to Jesus when? He comes at night. And he says, we know who you are or what you are, that you are from God. And so the contrast between Nicodemus, who is a religious leader, a Jewish person, all the things that this woman is not, male, he comes at night saying, we know who you are, God, but we're not going to listen to you. And then we don't find out to the end of the gospel where Nicodemus fits in this whole thing. Well, this woman, conversely, getting back to the 12 noon thing, you don't get a brighter time of the day. So this woman is interacting with Jesus, not just symbolically, but really in full daylight, where there is nothing that is hidden and nothing that is secret. So this woman really is a good person. And yet in the gospel, she's disparaged by society. And even subsequently, a lot of times, she's disparaged by people who want to comment on this gospel. But she is a good person. She is open. Because she's talking with this person who is an enemy of hers. The Jewish people and the Samaritans were, they considered each other enemies. And so she is open. And she's not also spouting off or mouthing off a whole bunch of religious political things of the day. Oh, you're going to ask me for a drink. Oh, here's my bucket. Good luck for you. You know, you treat us horribly. Now you're in Samaria. So, you know, she doesn't talk like that. And you would imagine most people in that society would have because of that animosity between the two. So this woman's a good person. And she doesn't really seek God openly, but she is a woman of faith. And as a woman of faith, she's always open. And so she's seeking, and she doesn't really know what she needs or she's seeking, but that's where Jesus comes in. And when Jesus talks to her, he helps her to understand things that are important for her. He responds to her. He doesn't reject her. And he basically has this conversation with her. And what he does is, is she is finding her place in life. And as a person of faith, he orients her in the right direction. He speaks about the living water. He speaks about true worship. He recognizes the value of who and what she is as an individual and as a person, and he helps her. And what she does then is she has found something, and she knows something is special. Just like Nicodemus knew that Jesus was special. But unlike Nicodemus, she does something about it. What does she do? She finds something and she goes to share this with other people. And she uses two or three words that are very particular. If you remember when Jesus calls his disciples, he says to them, as he calls them, they say, Jesus, where are you staying? He says, come and see. And so she goes to her, her fellow villagers, and she says, come and see the man who has told me everything I have ever done. And so she becomes a witness, a disciple, an evangelist minutes after having met Jesus because she is a good woman of faith and because Jesus addresses her and welcomes her. So she goes and she brings other people to him. And again, don't forget the contrast. Nicodemus comes at night because he's got something to hide. He is there full daylight as a good person, a good person, a good woman of faith. Jesus definitely does break down social norms because they were wrong, plain and simple. Religious norms that were wrong. And welcome, sir, as a woman, as a Samaritan, as a person, as an individual. 
And that whole thing about Jacob and the well, and we claim to be greater than Jacob who gave us this well. And yeah, the son of God is greater. And what she was talking about was the past. And Jesus is saying that this new way, the way of life that, that God is inviting you to, is, is different and it is greater than the old. And that is a fact and a reality that we all experience in life in the sense that time is always changing. Things change. And if we as the church don't move along with that and move along with the guidance of the Spirit, then we're stuck in the time of Jacob. We're stuck in that old time. And Jesus is saying that the Father is inviting us to live life as it is now. Not as it was, because that's gone. So the challenge that Christ gives her is, know me. If you knew the person who was talking to you. And it's the same invitation. Come and know Jesus for who Jesus is. Come and know me. And then he offers this living water. This wellspring, this, this from within, the grace of God, the love of God, that is what God wishes for all of us. So she goes and she doesn't just keep it to herself. She goes and she shares this. And ultimately, those people come, and they come to know Jesus, and they believe on their own. And so what it is, is she becomes someone who brings them to Jesus. That whole thing with the harvest is very important, especially now as we, we ponder things. Things have changed lately, haven't they? They're different. Well, guess what? They've been different and changing forever. And particularly now, we can cite this or cite that and say things are different now. And indeed they are, because time moves on. But with the harvest, we kind of wonder at times where are people of faith who would join us? And the problem with people who sit back and wonder that a lot of times is there's a fisherman who sit back and wait for the fish to jump in the boat. Or they, they want to hear about the harvest, but he's like, pile that out there, and I can sit back and say, wow, we got a lot of stuff here. But Jesus speaks about sowing and reaping, and we have to be active, all of us, in doing that, because the harvest is rich. The word of God is so great and welcoming because it is how we are made. But that harvest and that sowing is an issue of doing so as God shows us it is as we listen to the word of God, and then we share that with each other. Relationships require work. And if we're going to build a relationship with God, and we're going to build a relationship with each other, then we have to be dedicated to each other, and we have to work on it. And how do we do that? By expressing our concern, by loving, by forgiving, by being merciful. An interesting part of this gospel, and you may sit back, and if you listen to Wednesday's um, reflection, I mentioned it there. She leaves her bucket behind. It's an odd thing to put in the gospel. Why would John waste any space or words by saying she leaves the, her, her bucket or her pail or whatever it was, she leaves it behind and goes to talk to other people? Because it's the fact that she's leaving the old behind and going to the new. She's thinking about not the water in that well. She's thinking of the living water in the presence of God who has touched her. And so when we ask ourselves, what is this gospel really calling us to do? What's, where are we going with this? Is God is saying, leave your bucket behind and come and see. It's a great invitation during Lent to move into, to grow into a greater love of God and each other and that's really what we're about in Lent. It's what we're about all throughout life. But can you leave your bucket behind? Leave it behind. And then we are free to come and see. Come and see that glory of God. To recognize Jesus for who he is. And become the followers and the family of God that we were all created to be. May God be blessed.
invite you at this time, if you wish, please stand and let us profess our faith. We believe. Oh, Scriptures, Prayers of the people. Only God knows what we truly need to endure the rough and tumble of life. Provide the church with zeal to preach the sacrifice of Christ so that your people all over the world will develop a deep faith and receive peace, life, hope, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Merciful God, yeah. help world leaders to hear the cries of their people. May they listen to the word and practice it in their relationships with each other, ending violence and war. Give them the desire to honor diversity and acceptance. Bless the plight of Ukraine. Merciful God. Your Honor. Heavenly Father, you gave us this good land. May we remember your numerous gifts and be thankful for them. Save us from violence, discord, and hatred. Help us to become a united people and give those who we have given authority and government to practice justice and peace. Merciful God, in times of difficulty and doubt, help us to rekindle our faith in you as provider of all things. Merciful God, help us to furnish the physical and spiritual needs of our neighbors. Merciful God, Restore the sick to good health and increase the faith of the dying. Merciful God. They also offer to your prayers that I ask you to pray for Mary. Merciful God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Broken Thank you. 
All those who stand and sit up today, in As you are, as Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all, creator of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. And we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open to us the way of freedom and peace. This and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy and wonderful. God, And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the blood, now celebrate his gift to us. We bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this bread and this cup, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. God of our holy ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Deborah, Ruth, and Esther, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for power only and not for compassion, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor, glory, worship, and praise, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Coming together as the one family of God and joining together with our sisters and brothers who are not physically receiving communion today, we pray our prayer of St. Alphonsus, celebrating our oneness in God as we are all part of the body of Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to become a separate God. Thank you. the gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray together our post communion prayer. Eternal God, I've graciously accepted us as living members of a great son of the Savior Jesus Christ. 
May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As far as announcements, just to remind you that in the bulletin are Lenten practices. The things that we're doing during Lent and offering uh, are listed there. Uh, to take special note of the, uh, we just had our uh, candlelight stations of the cross. There are at least two other dates where that's going to happen, and it happened this previous Friday. Uh, from what I heard, it was very nice and very well done, so I invite you to that, as well as the other things that we are doing um, to provide ourselves the opportunity to gather and to pray during Lent. Thank you. Now we... Uh, now we can nice spot of that so local on two more days. And now we can has also prepared a um, complete and yearly calendar for you to look at if you like. The back of the camera, you're welcome to take one. And it lists all the things that we do as an outreach congregation. Yearly projects that we do on a weekly basis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Um, we're doing a fundraiser and we're calling it the Spirit of David. Uh, I have samples out there. It's a, a different in the alcohol infused cakes. There's rum and whiskey and Kahlua. So I have samples out there for these all. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Any other announcements, please? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 
Some reason these days seem longer when you're having the uh, stop. 